In this video, I'll show you how you can replace your click to reveal with a drag and drop. So in this interaction today, I'm going to show you how you can use the drag and drop function built into Adobe Captivate to replace or instead of a regular click to reveal. Normally with click to reveals, they all kind of work the same. So this is a way to make it a little more interesting to your learners as well. Also, I'm going to build in some force navigation. So the user has to drag all of the objects over to their drop target in order to see the next button and continue with the rest of the project. If you happen to be a downloads member of my YouTube channel, or higher, you'll be able to download the project file for yourself and play around with this and see how I built this for yourself. Let's get started. Okay, so let's just quickly review the things that I have on my slide here. I'm just using shapes. I've not used any images or anything like that. I have these seven objects here and their purpose will be to be drag objects that will come over to this drop target. The drop target itself is a multi-state object. Let's go into state view so that you can see it there. And the initial state is just blank. And of course we have our seven different multi-state items that correspond to this lesson that we're teaching people about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit the state now from the top there. I also have a continue button, which is just go to next slide. I've given it a very specific name and I've not made it visible in output so that when the learner first arrives on this slide, they won't see that continue button. Incidentally, all of the objects on this slide have unique labels instead of smart shape 01, smart shape 02. I've given them labels that make sense or correspond to the a thing that I'm teaching today. So we have habit one through seven over here and we have drop target over here. And you can customize these how you wish, but I've given this a, I think it's a nice look and feel to it that matches my theme here. Now, the first thing we need is we need to be able to keep track of which items we've dragged over to our drop target in order for us to display the continue button once all of them been, have been dragged over. So let's go into the project drop-down menu and go into variables, open up the variable window, and we're gonna add a new variable here. I'm gonna call the first one underscore habit one. I'm just gonna copy that to make it easy to make uh, habit two through seven. So we'll save that, we'll add a new, I'll paste in what I have and just change the number at the end. Okay, so now I have all of my variables that will keep track of this. Now, due to the nature of shared actions, I'm gonna put in a placeholder variable that's just gonna help me in writing my shared action. So I'm gonna click Add New, and I'll just call it Placeholder, and we'll save that there. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the variables window. And what we'll do now at this point is build the advanced action that our shared action will be based upon. So we'll click on the project drop-down menu and select advanced actions. We'll call this drag over, maybe put an underscore between the two, and we are going to assign the variable for habit one. But in this case, I'm gonna use that placeholder variable because uh, I wanted to point to different things later on. So I'm going to assign it a value of a literal value of one. And when we do our drag over, I know that's not included in the advanced actions, but we're going to change the state of our drop target. So we'll choose change the state of drop target. Again, I labeled it that. And for now, we can just choose habit one. But again, this advanced action will be the basis of all of our shared actions. 
Now I'm gonna call this drag, just to keep it straight that there are multiple tabs here. And then over on the second tab, we're going to call this check, to check to see if we have completed the interaction. Now a check such as this will need to be a conditional advanced action. So we'll have to click on conditional tab. And what we'll do is we'll say if our variable that we created for habit one is equal to the literal value of one. In other words, it's been dragged over and we need to duplicate this a number of times because I need a total of seven of these conditions or checking the value of that very of a different variable a total of seven times. So I can use the copy control here, select the line below it and hit paste, paste, paste. And unfortunately there's only four lines for my if section, but I can add additional lines by using this add control here. So I can add another line, paste, that's five, six, and seven. So now let's change these variables to point to the other variables that we set up before. So variable uh, for habit two, the variable for habit three, four, let's scroll down a bit. six, and lastly, number seven. Oops, scroll down too far, there it is there. So if all of them are equal to one, all I need to do is show the continue button, which is usually enough of a cue to let learners know that they finished the interaction. So we'll use the show action, and we'll just type in, I think I called it next button slide one. There it is there. So I like to save this as an action because later on when I might be uh, working with this project uh, six months from now, I might not remember what's in that shared action because you can't edit a shared action once it's created. So I always save the original advanced action. And now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna save as a shared action. And you'll see that a bunch of these are set up by default. That's fine, I'm cool with that. I am going to change this placeholder variable to one of the other habit parameters here or habit variables. So variable for drag, current drag, maybe might make more sense. Current drag, we'll place a description in here for drop targets or drop target and the state of the drop target related to the drag. These descriptions are just for you. And obviously we need our next button as well. So let's put that in there. So you can write whatever you want in here as long as it's meaningful enough for you that you'll understand later what this, uh, what this uh, shared action does. So I think that's pretty clear. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Okay, and we can close this now. So, you know, the, the thing that's interesting about shared actions and advanced actions is in many of my tutorials, I show you how to activate them um, when you press a button or when you click on an arrow or things like that. But this is actually going to initiate these advanced actions, or in this case, the shared actions, when we perform a drag and drop. So first thing we need to do is create our drag and drop. You could use the drag and drop wizard, but the problem with that is that the last step of the drag and drop wizard is to select a correct answer. There is no correct answer in this case. I'm just using the functionality of dragging and dropping to change the state of my drop target. So I can go over to the drag and drop panel, and if it's not open already, you can activate that by clicking on your window dropdown and simply selecting drag and drop, and that will show it right here. I'm gonna click the plus icon to create a new drag and drop interaction. 
First thing will happen is you'll get a submit button. I don't need a submit button in this case, so I'm just going to drag my submit button to the scrap area. Unfortunately, you can't delete the submit button without deleting the interaction. So we'll just put it in the scrap area so our learners won't see it. So now I'm going to select all of my drag sources just by drawing a selection rectangle around them. Go back to the drag and drop panel because it will switch to the properties inspector. And we are going to mark these as a drag source. Simple, right? Now I'm going to select my drop target and again go back to the drag and drop panel and we will mark that as a drop target. So that's pretty good. Now a couple things that want to happen when I do drag these items over. I don't want them to block the drop target. So I'm going to change the depth to back. That means it's going to put any of these items behind the drop target, which is exactly what I want. And uh, under actions, I'm just going to make sure that this has no action because it's not going to, uh, there is no correct answer, obviously. And uh, that's about all we need to adjust with the drag and drop panel. Now let's go over back to formatting and we'll go to object actions. So we want to uncheck accept all because in this case, we only want one item to go into the drop target at a time. So I'm going to uncheck that, leave the count at one, and instead of rejecting new drags, we want to replace whatever drop item or drag item has been placed in the drop target below. Now what we want to do is apply our shared action to habit one through seven. These are the names of the objects here. That's going to help you. Again, labeling your objects is so important when creating interactions like this, because if it says smart shape 273, it's not going to be very meaningful for you. So let's click on no action and we will change that to execute shared action. And we're going to use our newly created shared action drag over. Click on the action parameters icon and we will start to make the selections appropriate for uh, habit one. So the variable for this current drag is habit one. The drop target is the drop target and the state that we're going to is habit one. If we're complete, we're going to display the next button. So this is why I sometimes call shared actions, fill in the blank advanced actions, because all I need to do is provide the objects and variables and the states for that previously created advanced action. I don't need to write the advanced action again. So I'm going to hit save. Okay. And now I'm going to move on to the second item. We'll go to execute shared actions, click on the action parameters icon. And now we're working with habit two. Our drop target is the same habit two, and then our next button. So we just repeat this for each of these drag and drop actions here. So execute shared action. We're now working with habit number three. Drop target is always the same. And choose the habit three item or in this case state. And then finally our next button. Okay, so now we're on our final of the drag and drop advanced actions or shared actions. So habit seven is the variable. The drop target is the drop target. The state we're changing the drop target to is habit seven. And of course, the next button is the next button. I'll hit save. Okay. And okay. So I think we're good to go. Let's test this out. So let's start with be proactive. We'll drag this over. It changes there. Again, it goes behind the drop target so you don't see it. But if I drag something else over, it goes back there. So I can go back to that drag and drop item uh, again if I wish. But for each of these items, I see new information that's going to help me 
learn all about, in this case, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People by Stephen Covey. Once I've got them all over, I get my continue button, and of course the learners can continue with the rest of the e-learning. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.